everybody. Welcome to the Homeworkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have a returning guest. Uh, one of our Hallmark authors t- is here today, Cassidy Carter. And I'm really thrilled to be talking with her again. I am film critic Rachel Wagner. And Cassidy, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast. I'm so excited to be back. Yes. So uh, we have a special announcement uh, that we are going to say for the end of the podcast. But uh, before we talk about all of that, uh, how have you been? Um, I've been doing great, actually. Extremely busy. I know everyone's not used to it, but I've been really quiet on Twitter. <laughs> and um, just exceptionally busy. I have a couple projects in the works. And as you know, with the pandemic, a lot of people working from home, my children are coming home. So homeschooling, working from yeah. home I've got yeah it is a real juggle and you know I feel for everybody who's out there in the exact same situation because it is it's tough getting everything done during the day yeah, yeah. isn't it crazy that I, I I feel like I almost have in a certain way more to do than I did before because I've got all of my other normal stuff that I did before uh but now I have to like I don't know. I have to cover television and just do the things that take longer. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I feel like I am in, in most ways just as busy, but it's just different kind of maybe a little bit different. It is. Than it was before. It is. And do you find your day just disappearing? Like you yeah. wake up yeah. in the morning and you're like, I'm going to get these four things done <laughs> and you blink and it's lunchtime. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I totally do. And I, I find that without, without the, the going to church on Sunday, mm-hmm. like the week's just blend together That's like i don't have that sunday sort of here's what i'm doing on sunday kind of thing i don't like know marker yeah it's the yeah. same for us our churches are closed we do a church-wide zoom meeting every sunday yeah. and then our services are virtual and so and it's the same for the kids too you know they don't have sunday school to market or they don't have any right. of their other activities to kind of keep track of the week so nobody even knows what day it is anymore yeah. Well, have you been doing like any quarantine baking or crafts or any anything like that? I'm a great cook, but I'm a terrible baker. So <laughs> I know I know everyone's out there like learning to make sourdough, start making their own starter and like harvesting the bacteria from like thin air. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> it's not in a box or a mix. Like, but I will pull six things out of the fridge if you think you have nothing to eat for dinner, and I will MacGyver you something to yes. eat. So, yeah. But I cook a lot, but I don't bake a lot. So I'm no. the same. I'm I the am. same. Well, any, especially anything with like yeast. Yeah. That intimidates me. It's, it's such a long process. You've got to yeah. like wait and wait and wait. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to measure. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a whole science and I just yeah. never get it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> You'll never see that on Instagram for me. There will be no cupcakes with the perfect <laughs> frosting. Yeah, that's no. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know it's just been, it's been such a surreal time. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I feel like every time we feel like, oh, maybe we're, we're on the, uh, um, uh, we're on the up we're we're you know we're finishing out this mm-hmm. experience uh and then it feels like it spikes back up again and so and i mean i i feel very fortunate because i mean i i have been pretty careful i haven't got, gone out very much mm-hmm. um and if i did i've been wearing a mask and and uh and so i haven't gotten sick uh but i'm because i'm the kind of person that whenever anything's coming around i I almost always get, get right, it. Right. And so the fact that I haven't gotten it, I feel is very lucky. <laughs> oh, good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to be careful. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's just totally changed the way everything like works, the yeah. way everybody thinks. Yeah, it has. And, and I mean, and you think about your life as an adult, like typically most, for most people, even if you think they have the most exciting job, most of us, it's just a adult life is just doing the same activities over and over and over and yeah, over and over again. It's just different chores, right? And and so then 2020 is like, eh, nope. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. That. And you don't realize how much mentally you rely on your everyday routine yeah. to yeah. kind of keep you until like a lot of the little stuff that maybe even before we're like, oh, we got to go to the 
the store. Yeah. Oh, well, I got to go to Home Depot. Oh, my faucet's leaking or whatever. Like right. how much all those little tiny, like outside the house stuff. And just because then you go from seeing hundreds of people every day, just in your errands or going to the post office to yeah. like, oh, you know, it's just these four walls. I know it's true. Yeah. You don't realize how much that if, if you're somebody like, uh, uh, you know, you and I that work from home before this, right? Uh, that he, he, like I didn't realize how much those interactions actually did like mean to me uh, mentally and spiritually and everything. <laughs> like exactly getting to see my friends and and uh, it's oh, man, it's been it was way harder than I I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, you know, but. Yeah, it's been crazy. So what we thought would be fun, uh, since we've had you on before, we've done the regular interview, uh, we thought it would be fun to take a look at a Hallmark movie. And uh, the one that I could think of that is most about writers is from 2015, A Novel Romance. Now this is, a, I think, a pretty fan favorite. It's pretty cute. And uh, so we're going to break it down. We're going to talk about it. And then we will have your big announcement. It's very exciting. I love it. Uh, so uh, had you seen this before? I have seen it uh, several times. This is actually one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I love the cast. I'm a, <laughs> so I'm just a huge fangirl in general, like anything genre or nerdy. So, of course, Amy Acker comes from Angel. And uh, I love Angel. I just rewatched mm -hmm. it with my girl, like, the yeah. entire run all the way all seasons and um so i love amy acker um just it's such a sweet little movie like it's just and of course it yeah. has a romance writer in it so how can you resist right <laughs> yeah it's a really really cute one and i think there are a couple things about it that and then i feel like this was a really strong period for hallmark movies you know, around around uh between like 2014 and 2016 like that spot there i feel like they did some really good stuff and uh, it was before they kind of got lost in so much content mm -hmm. uh and i i feel like the the movies in and of themselves were a little bit a little bit more solid just a little more grown up mm -hmm. uh in in some of the some of the things uh there's some unique things about this um and yeah this one i really i really enjoy and i think a lot of it does fall on amy acker's shoulders she is very charming she is adorable and so is dylan bruce yeah he's he, he he's somebody i i haven't seen in uh, a ton of stuff uh so yeah he's he's really he's really cute he in a kind of uh everyday he feels like a normal person that you right. might actually like meet. <laughs> right. Like passing him on the street. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't pass him, but you know what I'm no. saying. Yeah. And I guess he, uh, he was a soap guy. He was on as the world turns. Yeah, And then actually, uh, I loved him in this before I love hated him in orphan black, which oh, I don't yeah. know if you've watched yet, but, he, and I don't want to give away that show if nobody's watched it, but he's not necessarily the best of guys in Orphan Black, but he's excellent in the show. Isn't there a time travel element, Orphan Black? Uh, it's a, um, like a clone. It's a kind of a sci-fi-y thing. I don't uh -huh. know if yeah. I say too much. It, you, okay. you just kind of got to get to do it. It's a, yeah. If you're into yeah. the sci-fi stuff, it's a fantastic show too, but yeah. yeah I've, so, heard, I've heard good things. Yeah. So he has really good range. Yeah, he also was in uh, Love's Christmas Journey mm -hmm. so before on Hallmark, so he's done one other one. And uh, Amy, I, I think she did for, she said, did Dear Santa for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see here. Well, a Nutcracker Christmas for mm -hmm. Hallmark after uh which that one's really unique and different yeah that um, one's cute mm -hmm. i let's see here if there's anything else yeah, i think it's just those two but those are fun okay. so all right well so this movie it starts out on uh you see the uh you see the writer uh the um uh, his name is Liam, uh, mm -hmm. played by Dylan Bruce, 
and you see him with the piles of of scrunched up uh, papers, and uh, that he's you know he's got writer's block. He's struggling, and I was just curious as a writer, have you ever had the pile of angry angry papers? and that you've tossed away <laughs> or is that gone the wayside of the uh, ipad i don't that seems like a, a i don't it's kind of a personal drafting thing i never draft on paper i know there's a lot of people that do i just yeah. i need it all in one place and backed up um in case anything happens <laughs> uh that's like a writer's and i feel like that's such a thing on it's like yeah. such a trope on movies about writers is you immediately see the like pile of crumpled uh-huh. up papers. And you see them like writing no. furiously and they rip it off and they, <laughs> and they always miss the trash can. Like nobody's like a perfect shot. So, you know, there's yeah. like 20 bucks and they right. never, they never stop to just pick them up and put them in the waste paper basket. Like before they continue, they're so frustrated. They can't even get out of their chair, but, um, or love letters. Have you noticed that too? Like if they use that same uh, device, like yeah. oh, you just can't write the perfect love letter. You're like, bah, and then you always, and invariably the one that misses the trash can or whatever, somebody else like the up. perfect one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So you've never, you've, you've, you've been good about your, uh, about your paper usage. Yes. I'm very responsible. And <laughs> good. That's I just good. do it on the, I, in the digital form. And, uh, because if you act, I don't know, you accidentally throw out, what if you accidentally throw out like your page four and you're like, oh, one's great. Two's great. Three is fantastic. Page five. <laughs> what's going on? And you know, I would. Yeah. So he is, uh, he has a pseudonym mm-hmm. of, uh, let me tell you while you're checking out the pen name situation that his act character name Liam Bradley in this made me think so much of only you have you seen that movie Mm -hmm. with Marissa Tomei and Robert Downey Jr. yeah and her like destined soulmate's name is a Damon Bradley and I was like I wonder if somebody because I put easter eggs in like my writing in my books and stuff I'm like I'll put little in jokes that like I'll name something after something and nobody knows but me so I wonder if these writers are slipping in some some uh, references in naming him Bradley as a last name. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, see that. I, I, I was actually just thinking about uh, Only You because I watched, uh, for a video I did for my other channel, I watched uh, um, In My Dreams, mm-hmm. which I think is very similar to mm-hmm. uh, Only You. Anyway, oh. uh, he, has a, uh, he has a pen name. And, uh, and do you, have you worked under a pseudonym? Yes, actually I write under a pseudonym. Um, just because when you hop genres, like my first set of publishing in romance, you know, my first round of publishing, if you will, was, uh, like higher heat romance. And so just for branding purposes and so that readers kind of know what to expect. I have two pen names and one is the Hallmark Cassie Carter. It's sweet. You kind of know what content you're getting there and uh-huh. then the uh, harlequin uh, karina press pen name of jenny glass is so that you don't get the I books like mixed it. up and get like accidentally pick something up and you're like whoa <laughs> there's more than kissing in this book <laughs> yeah <there is. laughs> that's funny i like the jenny glass that how do you decide on a pseudonym oh so i don't know if you remember from our last podcast but um when Lisa was here and we were talking about uh, the Glass family from uh, Franny and Zooey from J.D. Salinger, but he oh, writes all yeah. one family and it's the Glass family. And so right. I thought it was very cute. And I'm a big fan of alliteration. So yeah. it, hopped, it hopped from one. Penny so he is, uh, he's this popular, it's obviously inspired by Nicholas Sparks. Well, I mean, you can see the cover there. Yeah. Dead, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, he, he has this pseudonym and it's a big secret. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> what did you think about that? As a writer, we were just like, oh, that never happens. That's not a thing. I mean, it could be, it could be a thing just because uh, in today's world, you never know privacy wise. I could un- kind of understand it if he's a really private person and he doesn't want anybody under the sun to be able to go like look him up you know because 
I mean, you see it all the time, not that writers and, you know, celebrities or people on TV are the same level of exposure, but you just never know. And maybe that's the, maybe it's a little paranoid, but I don't know. I could see wanting to retain your privacy a little more. Mm -hmm. Um, And if, if he's a, if he's writing in the romance genre, which it was obvious from the movie, the first one, the first book was about like his failed relationship. It was inspired by a breakup. Yeah. And uh, maybe he didn't want that past person to be like, oh, that was totally what happened to us. Or he was worried that his family would judge him for, because romance kind of, I mean, it gets a bad rap sometimes, right. un- undeservedly so. Well, and he almost seemed like in the story that he was kind of embarrassed to be writing romance. Yeah. I don't know. I like to think of it more as he was embarrassed to be kind of putting his business out there. Maybe, but he's, because he, uh, once he wrote the new book uh, that he was like, he, 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 I think he says something about how, you know, now he's putting it under his own name and mm-hmm. now he's pretty, you know, proud of what he's doing. And, right. um, but yeah, he, uh, he also had parents die in this car crash. Evidently they give this motivation. And so uh, that Evelyn's parents were famous or something like that and uh or or something and this big plane crash and so that's also part of the reason why he's very private yeah i think his parents were uh film stars or movie stars or something yeah. so and you're right i think about this time period being like a little more layered in the movies because you can kind of understand too if you think about that in relation to the uh to the pen name maybe he doesn't want to make it on the merits of his parents you know, maybe he yeah. doesn't want, so, okay, well, maybe I want to prove that my writing is good. So I'm not even going to tell anybody where I come from, you know, that I'm from these like successful high profile people, or he doesn't want anybody like, he doesn't want his work to be judged, held yeah. up against the tragedy, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, so they have a meet cute in this movie with, with Sophie, Amy, actress character Sophie. Sophie and Liam meet on a plane. She gets the uh, first class upgrade, and it, it's true that once you once you once you go first class, it's really hard to go back. It's so much better. <laughs> it's the best. Have you ever gotten to fly first class? I have never. I've only flown a couple of times in my life, mostly for work, and mm. it's always been coach. Oh. <laughs> and I've never flown first class. And I actually, I'm a little, I'm, I'm very nervous flyer. So, um, uh, not that, like most of my vacations and things like that, I try and drive. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, if it's not cross country, like I'm not going to hop in a car and like, you know, drive yeah. to New England or something like that. But, um, yeah, no, I've never been in first class. You've been in first class? I have. I've been in first class. Uh, I, I, I've i been able to get the upgrade, and it is the best. Jealous. <laughs> I'm so much better. It's like, oh. Jealous, yeah, jealous. I know. It's the best. If you can use your frequent flyer miles it, to go to get the upgrade, I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, but yeah, so they have this meet cute on the plane, and she uh, she basically is re- she's reading his book, and uh, he asks her about it, and she basically just tells him that it's not very good. <laughs> right. Oh wait, she's reading the second one because she's like, yeah. I loved the first one; it was so good, it was so authentic. And then she's like, this one just seems like a repeat of the. F- he yeah. lather, you know, rinse, repeated. <laughs> Yeah, and she's over in New York trying to get a job right now. She is, she's working in uh, as a reporter for a newspaper. Yeah, she's actually um, doing book reviews for a paper. Yeah, that's what she wants to do, but they make her do all this other stuff. Oh yeah, because I think his book is going to be her first, like, like published a book review because her editor at one point pulls her aside and says hey you know that book review you're doing let's add you know the big reveal to it yeah yeah well and it's funny i feel like 2015 like the whole idea of like the book blogger was way more relevant than it Mm. is now yeah yeah i don't know i feel like everyone switched over to uh, blogs are not a thing now it's podcasts and and yeah Instagram. i mean as somebody who blogs myself like it's definitely there's been a big change since uh since in the last five years as far as moving over to, yeah to podcasting or 
to uh to youtubing or others you know booktube i think uh and uh even uh on instagram all that kind of stuff like there are certainly people who still blog professionally but I don't, mm-hmm. it's just not as uh not as common i don't think as it was i feel like this was would have been like peak book blogging right and it's kind of cross platform now like everything you have to be everywhere it has to if you even yeah. have a blog, you still have to have the instagram and the yeah like everything yeah agreed yeah. and so yeah it, as uh, as an author could you kind of sympathize with liam at that moment where he's she's just like kind of going off about about uh the book and <laughs> all the stuff you're like whoa okay i mean i've never had anybody in like in person be like oh yeah pick this book yeah. up by cassidy carter and let me tell you it stinks <laughs> um thankfully but yeah. again i don't get out much <laughs> <laughs> uh the reviews though online i mean amazon goodreads all of that it's such a mixed bag and you're never gonna have somebody enjoy your stuff 100 percent of the time so Mm -hmm. uh of course i've gotten poor reviews and then sometimes you get ones that just mystify you they'll be like i absolutely despise hallmark and i every time i accidentally turn the channel on i get ill and but they're like i bought this book in one star and you're like wait you hate it like you know you hate it going in what are you doing but um you know there's it's 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 gonna be all over the place i do sympathize with him yeah stop hate reading like what on earth (laughs) who wants to feel bad like i'm never like oh uh i absolutely just which i love broccoli i'm just gonna say this for an example i hate broccoli let me get a giant plate of it (laughs) and eat nothing but broccoli all day and at the end of the day i'm gonna be very upset about it i'm gonna tell you uh but you know i don't know it takes all kinds everyone's everyone's got their something but i'd sympathize with him because man in person if you ever if i ever had someone write in front of me i would just be like lost for words i'd be like oh, oh, oh i'm so sorry <laughs> you did i just be apologizing to them <laughs> <laughs> well so uh, liam is going out to portland because he's finally going to make the big announcement he made a deal with the publishers he's going to reveal who he is this is huge and uh, he uh, he doesn't reveal who he is to sophie but they have this cute little banter back and forth and mm-hmm. and then uh they get to they get to portland and uh, he ends up offering her a uh, a ride in his limo mm-hmm. and so she's gone from first class to the limo yeah so she's pretty excited and <laughs> yeah i mean i guess if he's really a nicholas sparksian kind of a author he probably is flying first class and and driving limos right yeah if he's if he's like that if he's if he's up there Uh uh-huh and so then they they take like they even they take a selfie in the limo and there's all that stuff yeah and uh, one thing i liked in this film is i did think that the supporting cast was pretty strong it was Um, i you know i love tammy gillis and casey manderson play her her friends who Mm -hmm. are a couple and I thought they were really cute together, the the two of them. And uh, Charles Dutton is Charles pretty Dutton is good a, get, I think, a, for this movie. A treasure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he plays the bartender. He's her kind of surrogate father figure. Mm-hmm. And I thought he did a really nice job in the couple scenes he was in. I could have used even more of him, I think. But I think so too, because I will get there. You know, as we're talking through the movie, but I thought there end scene together was like the most special yeah um it was really very sweet and charles dutton has the backstory with his wife and so he kind of has that like sees the moment ever you know love his work and no, nothing's perfect like kind of talk with her and um but yeah and i did like her friends a lot i liked the dynamic between them where they switched sometimes you expected you know the boyfriend of that couple to be the one that's like oh guys you know but he's the one that's out there encouraging he's like you got to get out there and her girlfriend's the one that's like no 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 you know be careful yeah. and so you kind of expect it to be the switch where he's where the girlfriend's the one's like girl you got to get back out there and the guy's like slow down but they flipped there a little i like mm-hmm. that yeah so what did you think of his agent jackie 
Did you think that was even a little bit realistic as far as agent author relationships or no? So, you know, I am unagented. I have been unagented my entire writing career. I do oh, not have one right now. Um, <laughs> I, I have never had one. So I actually have no perspective. Um, I thought that their personal relationship was sweet. Um, and it's, she said she's known him since a little boy. And so she was kind of, again, you have the Charles Dutton father figure on the Amy Acker side. And mm -hmm. I think she kind of stepped into the mother figure role there for him. And it, I thought it was kind of nice for him to confide in her and that they have the working relationship, but she still kind of supports him. Even after he like runs out of the first reveal, he just runs out the door when he doesn't want to uh, do that first reveal. So I don't know. I thought that their dynamic worked well, but I don't know as far as the author agent relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't know the reality. Of, yeah. So is that hard for you though, to get in, uh, in with people like Harlequin and Hallmark without an agent? Uh, not necessarily. There's a lot of publishers. Hallmark has not Hallmark. I'm sorry. Harlequin has several lines that take unagented submissions. You just have to be very tenacious and I will not go away. So yeah. <laughs> Okay. yeah that's, good. that's very good uh my sister is an author and she she does have an agent and i think they have a pretty close relationship they've gotten they've worked together now for quite a while uh so yeah i mean i it's probably in this case they definitely like you said go to try you know they go to extra lengths to make it clear that this is more than just that they have more of that personal relationship right exactly yeah and but i liked her and i liked that actress i thought she did a good job yeah uh, the um uh camille mitchell is her name yeah i liked her i thought she was good yeah. as uh as his agent yeah and so there's this big reveal he ditches on the book signing mm-hmm and uh, what it, it, what is that like doing a book signing? Is that super awkward or fun or what do you think? Um, I I don't know who it's more awkward for. Uh, I'm sure it's something you get used to. I've only done a handful. Um, but I've, <laughs> I'm really not, I would hope that I'm not intimidating, but I think sometimes people are nervous to come up to you. Like, yeah, they're. I'm just a regular person like but I think I because I'm nervous that they're there too because every book that gets thrown down you know that's somebody that's like buying your work and and they're gonna read it and they're gonna judge it hopefully they're not gonna go on Amazon and say I hate Hallmark why did I buy this but um, <laughs> um I love interacting with people who just readers in general, people, even people who read books that aren't mine. <laughs> um, I just love interacting with fans. And if they're not fans of my books, I love interacting with readers. So I love signings, but I'm nervous. I'm always nervous because it's like, I don't, I don't want to run into the Amy Acker. That's like, <laughs> your first book was great, but the second one was awful. Just quit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I just, just, just realized is the writer for this uh this movie hans Wasserberger, is the same one who did the perfect catch oh, it, he is i did not know i didn't look at that i paid no attention to the credits and i rewatched this yesterday yeah yeah look at that and and we're we, people don't know cassidy wrote the uh novelization of the perfect catch so that's kind of kismet here there you go didn't even know <laughs> he's going in our favorites yeah uh and i think that he did a good job with this script uh and i like you know just little moments like when tammy gillis's character says to her that's what's going on a date is for get to know somebody <laughs> like, yeah she's like i don't even know him and she's like that's what dating is for yeah i thought that was funny i thought it was cute when he shows up for the date and um they they're just standing in the living room like and I'm like, yeah. why aren't they sitting on the couch? <laughs> like, they're trying to be all casual. They're supposed to, her friends yeah. are supposed to be there checking him out before she goes on the date to make sure they approve. And, you know, I'm sure I felt a little bit like, like it was there because Amy Acker was trying to find the, a reason like, well, uh, if you guys think he's weird, I'm not going to go out with him. Uh, but so they're just standing there like very woodenly in the yeah. living room and the boyfriend just starts grilling the date and her girlfriend goes you don't have to interrogate him and he kind of turns his head to the side and he goes i thought that's what we were supposed to be doing <laughs> yeah, yeah they were really funny it was i cute. really like i would see a a tammy gillis Casey manderson 
rom com all day. Yes, they yeah, were this really had funny. A, this had some rom com moments in it, which was which was good. Yeah, and I like I like the more rom com y ones where there's like a little absurd situation or yeah. yeah the, well, the, yeah, because so she had dated a football player, and and it had been all kinds of scandal. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was all in the tabloids and everything. And she'd gotten left. And so she's very, very, very nervous about like, uh, relationships and everything. And mm-hmm. so she, <laughs> she, yeah, she brings uh, her, has her friends there to meet uh, him on the date. And, uh, and then she also, uh, she's kind of like spies on him mm-hmm. uh, when, <laughs> when he's at uh when he's at finds out that he's uh, having a meeting at this this restaurant he's there meeting with jackie for uh lunch and uh, she's covering the story and so she's like spying on him and she comes Uh, out of a bush (laughs) she comes out of a bush on the side of the (laughs) she just like sees her and it's like a little this slightly awkward moment and then you know i wondered i was like oh in real life would you be like um like i'm having a business meeting i barely mentioned it to you on the phone <laughs> right <laughs> like uh because i do think that at this point once they have like now they're moving into a dating kind of uh-huh. thing that's the moment where he should have told her uh like once you're uh uh when you're just you know bantering back and forth or whatever then uh it's not necessary but the the, the i think the lie is fine but then the lie gets continued on too long. Right. And, and they, they did, but they did a really good job here in setting up uh, that the two of them both kind of have secrets and hers is like an emotional secret where maybe she hasn't come out and told him, uh, Hey, I had this past relationship with this very high profile athlete and it didn't turn out well. And so like, I'm maybe doing some questionable things here at the start of our relationship and that it's not about him and he's even cool about it in the end they're very like emotionally mature about it but and then they lampshaded a little about how when she goes to the club like later she thinks that he might be having a date with someone else and she shows up where he's supposed to be and it's just yeah. her, her co-worker with like another guy and it was just a misunderstanding but um she even kind of they even kind of lampshaded where she, amy acker herself says this is crazy what am i doing like yeah. This is, yeah. yeah emily Tennant works for the the um newspaper with sophie and uh and so she uh she is going on this date and but uh but for some, i forget why why does she think that that emily Tennant is going on the date with with liam because she goes to um work so she's coming up to work mm-hmm. which is a kind of another rom-com moment it's, it was a little funny um she's going to work and she sees liam standing outside talking to her co-worker oh, and then that's right, that's right. he leaves and when she walks up to her co-worker her co-worker said this gorgeous guy just came by and i asked him out on a date and he said yes and we're meeting him at that's, that's, right. that's right. I'm meeting him at such and such club, but that guy had come like 10 minutes before the hero right. did. <laughs> the, and it turns out that the hero was actually there to ask her out, or, you know, the heroine out for yeah. lunch, but she hadn't made it in yet. So uh, it was just kind of like a misunderstanding. Yeah. And then she calls him later and says, you know, hey, what are you doing tonight? And he says, oh, I'm working all night. Oh, it's so terrible. I don't, you know, I'm going to be tied up all night. And so yeah. she thinks he's lying like the Ex-boyfriend. right yeah. yeah and then she goes and she she sees that it's not them on the date and i do appreciate whenever a hallmark movie actually shows dating yeah uh, because a lot of times it's oh the person that they knew in high school or there's some kind of or they're working on something for work and so you don't really get like dating mm-hmm. and i i so i i, I like this that you know it's just like that awkwardness of the sort of the first date and mm-hmm. and, and you know a couple of the, the relationship is building and i think it's nice and i really thought it was super cute when they have that like first hand holding oh yeah, yeah. and they're walking together and then just all of a sudden they're holding hands and yeah, it, it was just, so the- cute yeah, they don't like make a huge deal out of it. No. But there's like a little moment, and then they just keep walking, and they're holding hands while they're walking, and then it just seems natural. Like, oh, this is okay now. And um, 
which also is a great little character moment because you don't see Amy Acker or, you know, Dylan, like, look like, oh, this is such a big deal. Oh, look, we're moving past all of our, like, baggage. It's just they're yeah. there, they're together. It's natural in the moment. It happens, and they, like, roll with it. And that's yeah. really sweet. It was yeah. really I, – I would like more sort of cute hand-holding yes. uh, moments. Like, I love in the movie Return to Me – uh-huh. And he asks a uh, mini driver if he can hold her hand. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's like, I'm an old fashioned guy. Oh, oh so cute. I know. So, so cute. I love that. More of that. Yes. Uh, and so I did also, I really liked after she uh, interrupts Emily Tennant on her date, uh, then she, she says to, am I just the world's biggest jerk? And, and Casey Manners says, says, well, I'm sure there's two, two, there's or, like two or three, two or three other bigger ones than you, right? I love that. <laughs> You're not the world's biggest jerk. There has to be at least two bigger ones. And then her girlfriend, his girlfriend's like, what? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was funny to me. They were really cute. <laughs> I love secondary characters that are funny, but yeah. not, not comedy relief, but just funny. Because you really do have a lot in this movie. Like we said, you have Charles Dutton, you have, uh, you have, uh, Tammy Gillis, you have Casey Manderson, you have Emily Tennant, uh, and you have Jackie, the, and uh, and uh, it's kind of his BFF type character. So you really do have quite a few fun secondary characters in this. You do, and you do this. The setting is not very big in this. You know, there's not like a big sense of. Like they're going all around the city. You know, sometimes yeah. you get the movie where they're like, let me show you the sights," or, you know, this is Christmas. And they're just going around a lot of different places. And so you get kind of a wider sense. This felt like a little smaller movie, but it felt like there was more character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he's about to tell her that he's this author. And then she admits first they're like, you go first. And she admits that she, about her humiliating breakup. And she's like, never date a famous person. I lost my ability to trust men. Yep. And she admits that she's been giving him tests. She's mm-hmm. been testing him. Yep. And, uh, and so it, then he sort of wimps out because she had just said that about not dating famous people. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, which he probably still should have just told her. Right, right uh, there. It's, it's only going to get worse from there. Mm-hmm telling the lies but it's such a fun uh romantic comedy trope of of the lying of the uh uh the you know mistaken identities the the lying the fake relationships that kind of stuff is such a Mm -hmm. is that like a good lie yeah (laughs) it has to be i always i always like it there's a line you have you can't be lying about anything like lifetime worthy right uh, (laughs) Like this could easily switch, you know what yeah, I mean? That's right. Um, but like, like you have like a secret family or that that's a bad lie. Right, exactly. <laughs> I only escaped from that one prison, but um <laughs> like this this kind of like um like emotional lie or where it's where it's like a because of circumstances and you know it can be cute you know yeah. it's, it's not necessarily even that if he revealed it that it's a bad thing that he's this writer or it's a bad thing it's not even a bad thing that he didn't tell her because even your your audience kind of understands i mean you understand watching it like he's kind of gotten so far into this and then the things that she says along the way every time he tries to do something kind of reinforces that oh it's not a good idea and maybe not in general and didn't intend to like deceive her but it just never seems like the right time and it yeah. spirals from there and he in the same conversation he tells her that i'm falling in love with you yeah because she says i would be giving you tests and that's something that they have definitely moved away from in hallmark movies of the early i love you mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times they won't even say it even in the end of the movie depending on uh depending on the situation but uh, they've definitely moved away from from that in hallmark there's kisses in this too there's like more than yeah they kiss kiss. in the middle of the movie it just at this dinner they have they kiss and i'm like yes i I love that that. because it's because then you get like a couple like little like moments like their first kiss doesn't always have to be like the big grand reveal sometimes it springs again from the situation you know i don't know you're in like a restaurant with fancy fairy lights twinkling everywhere and you're with some hot guy you're not going to be like oh just kidding my cell phone right right Uh, (laughs) yeah i I was wondering it's for work (laughs) 
uh, as a homework author, do you get a lot of, how much leeway did they give you as far as those kinds of things? Like, do you, you know, we, we just, we don't have, how, how much you know, like kisses do we want to have? How much? Uh, there's, there's no master list of like, you know, okay. limited to two kisses and like, it has to be a near kiss here or anything like that. Right. There's really no, it's kind of what's organic or natural to the story. You will probably, you would probably, and I never have, but you would probably get feedback if it was too much because in the books, we kind of have a little more space than you have in the movies. The movies, you're uh-huh. still 120. You're very like limited. Yeah. Um, and a lot of scenes get cut from uh, scripts and stuff like that. But um, you would probably get notes if you went too far in a book because sometimes you get carried away with yourself. Like you don't want to be too descriptive either. You know, nobody's mm-hmm. hands can wander. Like right. it has to be very, <laughs> yeah. um, nobody's, yeah. nobody is like, yeah. yeah. So you would get notes to kind of scale it back. I think if you're heat level, but I, and obviously they're not going to want them. It has to be organic. They yeah. can't be making out like every so. They're not three saying pages. we need a yeah. near kiss. Like, don't do uh, any of those kinds of things. No, for the no, most I've part. never gotten anything. Yeah. They, they're very, they're well, very they, nice it, to work with and trusting of the writers. Yeah, and uh, even the feedback is like very supportive. And edits at that round are very uh, focused on mm-hmm. what works and what would be best for the story that you're telling. And of course yeah. it has to be on brand. It has to be on brand, but I've never yeah. gotten notes where it's like, absolutely not. According to Hallmark, they can't have eye contact. Here. Right. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Well, we're a big fan of, of mid movie kisses in this podcast. I love it. <laughs> Mid- team mid movie kiss. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so uh, then do you think it was too early in the script for him to say that he's, falling in love or did you like that um so so a little bit i i wondered if it was really falling in love at this point yeah i wondered if it was really falling in love or if it was half like she's great she's wonderful we get along we have so much chemistry and uh this will be something that i can say in the moment to uh maybe oh because didn't he say before they went on the date i have something to tell you too Mm-hmm. And so maybe he's like, okay, that's filling in. Not necessarily that he's oh, being deceptive yeah. and saying, I love you, but like substituting the big reveal. Mm-hmm. And maybe in that moment, it's something that even he's beginning to realize. Like, oh, I, uh, what is it you had to tell me? Uh, it's okay, Amy Acker, that you've been testing me this whole time because you're testing our love. Yeah, like, right. and I love you. So it's kind of substituting that big reveal and kind mm-hmm. of pushing off what he probably should have told her in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So they, she finds out they have cut the book reviews from the newspaper. And so she is forced to decide what she's going to do. She decides she's going to, she decides to quit her job and she's going to start up her website, Mm rivetingreads.com. And it's going to be a huge success. And uh, so, yeah, and that whole website, like I said, it felt very 2015. It was kind of funny. Oh, (laughs) yeah, I know. Sad, but true. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny how technology changes and you see people. Do you ever look at people with their cell phones uh, uh, in shows from like 10 or 15 years ago? And you're like, my goodness. Like, (laughs) right. (laughs) Or somebody flips out their Blackberry or their (laughs) their sidekick and they're furiously texting. And you're like, that doesn't, that's not even around anymore. Yeah. And then... Uh, we have, let's see here. Sorry. So he's, he's really trying to, uh, to tell her and, uh, cause he has to do the reveal. He, he goes to New York to try to stop it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, he, uh, for just one night he goes to New York and he's, he fails in the, uh, and, and it seems like that if he's really such a big name, there's no way that they're going to agree to to if if he if he has signed a contract to provide a book would they do you think it really be satisfied with just with a different book that was one of the things that um i kind of was like no (laughs) (laughs) i mean everything is like very you know you have a contract for a certain book and you have to 
there's a big process that you go through before you get the green light for that. And um, that well, who have whatever publisher you're with agrees to publish that project. So the fact that he's just like, Nope, I scrapped that, but here's something else completely yeah. <laughs> different that I wrote. I was like, uh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, if you were just like, I didn't write the perfect catch novelization, uh, like we promised, but I did write this other book. Exactly. Like, uh, I really I really liked this one, and so I did it instead, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That- what, what killed me was that he threw that. So talking about writing on paper, he drafted the one that he w- that was due to the publisher. Yeah. He drafted it. Like, he had it ready. It was on this huge stack of papers and then he had this epiphany moment and he's like nah i'm good with this and he throws it it in the fire (laughs) why could you spend time to write that book why wouldn't you turn in both yeah 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 hey Uh, i i guess it's it's not him anymore it's not him anymore get another Uh, pen name that's sixty thousand words you are never getting back like that wasn't on dropbox that's (laughs) (laughs) that is in a fire and yeah that was a pretty dramatic scene and he's yeah. burning the burning yeah. the and then the and, publisher asks him about it at the meeting like well can't you just produce the other where where's the draft of the other one and he's like i'm sure the ashes are still back at my vacation <laughs> yeah. uh but it was super swoon swoon worthy he tells her he tells sophie you're the first thing i think about in the morning and the last person i think about before i go to sleep oh, and uh, and and a little bit in between that was very swoon worthy very sweet yes yeah yeah and uh, so he uh he ends up making the reveal and of course she is extremely upset about it uh, it has to it ends up being at the uh, bookstore because he's tried all these different times he tries to go to her work and he tries to all these different times to to text and call her mm-hmm. and uh so she's really upset and i have to say the whole liar reveal trope is typically not my favorite mm-hmm. uh because i don't know it just feels like it feels most of the time pretty uh disingenuous Mm -hmm. like come on you're not gonna be like you're you have like a talk it out and you'll be fine right um i I like these two actors enough and i like the relationship enough that i was okay with it but it's still not my favorite yeah conflict the the big misunderstanding conflict it's hard to do you have to handle it like the right way this felt okay to me because he knew the whole time well at least from the time that she said I was in this relationship with this famous person and everything went viral. And I was so embarrassed after the breakout breakup because basically like my business was just out there, um, you know, during this whole messy breakup and everybody knew and everybody saw and you as the audience know that the whole time. And then the hero knows it at a certain point on. And there were several points after that when you could have told her. And um, so I kind of, I was a little more on board with her reaction at the end when he says, or near the end, when there's that like lie reveal moment, she kind of looks at him like she's in a room full of people, you know, it's more of that public, like, oh, now I have to find out. And that same sense of betrayal, not, not that he cheated, but that there's a dishonesty there that he could have told her at any point, except for when they're in a room full of people, Mm -hmm. which is that kind of like, traumatic repeat yeah the tabloid kind of thing yeah and i do think though there's a big difference between famous author and famous uh star athlete (laughs) i feel like it's the same same kind of thing as far as tabloids go like i can't imagine the tabloids being as interested in nicholas sparks's romantic romantic whatever it might be i don't know right uh, but it within the story player yeah within the story do you remember when her editor was there and he was like i don't care what you write just whatever they're talking about on twitter on facebook whatever she's like you don't want us to write stuff we don't believe in he said as long as it gets eyeballs basically so i think that kind of played into the end there where it's like maybe people wouldn't wouldn't care so much even about the reveal of who this author is and who's behind this pen name. But if it's a little scandalous and there's some romantic, like love, you know, drama to go along with it, that it yeah. might blow up into a bigger thing. 
Yeah. And I just think by this point, we're so we're invested enough in these two people and Mm -hmm. the actors are so likable that they, that they make it really work and they, they make them separate for six months, which is pretty long for a Hallmark movie. I like that because to me, uh, they don't show it in between. Like if he's like blowing up her voicemail after, but it kind of says to me, like, I kind of respect both of them like a little better at the end and especially him because there's not like a big go after her moment you know he realizes yeah. like oh i should have said it and this is new and i'm just gonna leave her alone and she goes off and does her own thing and they're both sad about it and you know her age his agent comes and tells her he really misses you, but it's not like he's messaging her every day on Facebook or he's like, yeah. Hey, let's get back together. He just like lets her go live her life. And she's actually the one that pulls the like reverse nodding, you know, nodding Hill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I actually did write down. Now I'm looking at my notes way at the bottom. Gabriel August is the name. Gabriel August. Yes. And then there's at the very end, where there's the whole thing and he is coming out with his next book under his real name. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, yeah, he's, he is, he promises the publisher is this going to be something honest and real. This is going to be a huge book for you. And so then the agent goes to visit Amy, it goes to visit Sophie and tells her that he's still in love with you. And I think you're still in love with her. I mean, with him, I says, you know, you're still in love with each other and he get she gives the novel to Sophie mm-hmm. and well, we forgot to mention that Charles Dutton's character, he has had one great love mm-hmm. and his story about how he, he met his, his wife mm-hmm. uh, is it, it, he tells it to Liam. And when she reads the book, uh, she was kind of shocked at first because it has that story in uh, from uh, the Charles Dutton's character tells. Mm-hmm. And she goes and talks to him, and he says, "He says he called. He asked me. He got my permission, permission first. Yeah, to tell this story. And then it kind of leads into because she's ready to be upset for Charles Dutton. You know, she's ready. Right. To, she's a little ready to pile on." Um, Liam and say oh look you know he used he used all of us you know he was dishonest with me and he was just using you for reading you know inspiration for his reading material and look all of this personal stuff and um yeah Charles Dutton reveals he actually called and talked to me and asked me permission to use this which kind of rolls into him revealing a little more to Sophie about that relationship you know it's this it's this picture perfect story that I tell and it's this fairy tale love and I'll always remember it and it's basically the event of my life but it wasn't perfect all the time it wasn't always easy it was work you know yeah he earns his paycheck Charles Dutton in this scene he says yes loving someone is the hardest work there is when he says we had to fight for it Mm mm-hmm yeah and so she he basically says you got to fight for it too yeah which is a nice like it's a nice little blip of reality and hallmark is fantastic like escapism if you will it's very uh always very uh reassuring and you can watch them and you feel good and they leave you feeling good so this and this isn't necessarily like a downer moment but it's a nice little like reality check that um the the sweetness is a good thing but it there's a flip side you know you're gonna wake up with like bedhead and somebody is gonna be hangry at some point right <laughs> and uh you're gonna be stressed with work and you're gonna want to go away from each other sometimes that you're gonna tell a lie of omission or the way that he did that liam did where he just never found the right time and it built up to something bigger than it should have but at the base i think what charles dutton was telling her is like is this the right guy you know to go mm-hmm. to work with yeah like yeah and so they, it was a pretty classic rom-com scene he's there presenting his new book and he's uh, being asked questions and she stands at the back of the room and she asks him questions at the panel and mm-hmm. says uh and so they have this cute ending where they kiss in front of the whole crowd mm-hmm. and uh and <laughs> uh, and so 
there we go. That's our our movie. And so, yeah, I really think this is a cute Hallmark movie. I think uh, it has really nice chemistry between the two leads. I really like the dating. I really like all all the side characters and they are really well done. And so I enjoy this one. I'd probably give it like a 4.25 out of 5 crowns. Yeah. I'm going to go with yeah, I'm going to go with a 4.25. I yeah. loved it, actually. Mm-hmm. I, I It's a rewatch for me. So um, I'm, I'm definitely going to rank it up there. And mm-hmm. I actually like that that little moment at the end where the lights go down after they kiss and they're mm-hmm. standing in front of this big blow up of his book cover and the the name of the, do you remember the title of the book? It was the park that she goes to run in. Um, oh yeah and I didn't so write the, that down but it's uh it's named after the park that she goes to run in and like frequently and where they mm-hmm. had like their little final conversation where she's like you were dishonest with me and i can't do this and then they go apart for that six months so he names the book after the park that she goes to run in and that's on the book cover so on the book cover is the trees behind them and it's blown up on the wall behind them. And then they kiss and then the lights go down and they're silhouetted. Basically, it looks like they're standing oh, yeah. in the park again. And I loved yeah. that. I thought that visually was that was so cute. Mm-hmm. So yes. It was good. Well, very, very good. So let's now tell the exciting news. What is, what, Cassidy, is your big announcement? Okay, so there's a reason too. I, I loved that you picked this movie because it ties right into our big announcement. And I know that a lot of you know that I have two Hallmark books right now. You know, I did the novelization of The Perfect Catch and then last year put out Love on Location, which is set in the cabins in the pines. And it follows our lovely cabins in the pines family, Wyatt and Delaney, and their love story. And uh, I don't think I'm spoiling too many people by saying this but they get together in the end and um i have always wanted to revisit these characters i love them so much they're just like so warm and cozy and comfy for me and um i just the ink is now dry on the contract for a sequel to love on location (laughs) i'm so excited like i just i even just saying that and i've known it for a while now has just like made me kind of have like goosebumps um it is called um wedding in the pines oh. and we're going to get to see white and delaney's wedding and the whole amazing. the whole cast is coming back uh the book focuses on slater actually oh. slater is our hero in this one there's a little love from his past uh that unexpectedly pops up in a pretty fun way and uh, so we're going to have wedding hijinks and everybody coming back from the first book to the second book we're going to see alexandra again we're going to see Maisie, and again we're probably going to see norman the uh director again um we're definitely going to throw in kids and dogs and and campfires and uh, there's a lot of wackiness that's going to go on so it'll be just as fun as the first one i'm hoping i'm hoping that I avoid the the curse and that no one's on a plane next to me in <laughs> next spring yeah. going, well, our first one was good, but let's talk about this sequel. So I'm very <laughs> excited. I'm very excited. That is so great. I can't wait because we yes. really enjoyed uh, the Love and Location. Uh, it was one of my favorites of the Hallmark uh Hallmark publishing books that we've read and covered on the podcast. And I, I, I liked the whole, uh, the, there's a bit of a lie reveal in that one, uh, but I liked the whole, uh, the, the whole filming and, uh, or at least she's, she's upset at first about the, about the show. And, mm-hmm. and then she, she's able to, it all works out in the end, of course. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I really, I enjoyed that uh, story. So it'll be fun. That sounds great. So yeah. you'll you get like a, you get the, you get the wedding romance, but then you also get another romance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I like when you have a series and you have like a big returning cast where you uh-huh. can kind of start mixing up the dynamic a little more. And it's been, um, you know, I'm going to have, time will have passed from the end of so it'll be very realistic between last book and now and uh you get to see how they've grown as they've kind of fallen into the rhythm of having the two parts to the pines you know we have the executive side and the the old old home side and uh 
and how that kind of meshes together and how their lives have changed because really everything changed at the end of the last book. And so um, uh, mostly positive, mostly positive. And we get to see a lot of what's happened with property and a lot of what's happening. Even Delaney's daughter's older now and Mm -hmm. Wyatt and Delaney are taking the next step in their relationship. And then there's going to be, of course, this something new. So that's great. So it's yes. called Wedding on Location? It's called Wedding in the Pines. Oh, Wedding in the Pines. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That will be great. And when, when are you, when are you going to have that? So nothing specific is next spring. And as okay. soon as I have a hard date, I will be announcing it. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for ma- announcing that here on the podcast. This is so much fun. Congratulations. We're really excited for you. And uh, so, yeah, if people want to follow you on social media or, you know, where they can get your books and all that fun stuff, uh, how can they do that? Oh, you can find me at uh, most major book retailers, of course, Amazon.com. Hallmark has its own site at Hallmark uh, Publishing.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm most active on social media on Twitter. My handle there is at Cass Carter Books. And then my website is CassidyCarter.com. And you can get me through there as well if you prefer to send me an email please don't tell me that uh you don't <laughs> yeah. like hallmark yeah <laughs> dear cassidy i heard you talking about that movie yeah. and let me tell you none of that none of that <laughs> but but feel free to put in your very positive reviews of the podcast at it on, on itunes it really helps people find the podcast so much we really appreciate when people do that uh, but you can follow me at rachel's reviews all over social media itunes youtube and on rotten tomatoes so please check all of that out and uh, make sure you're following the podcast at hallmarkies pod and hallmarkies podcast all over social media and like i said if you're listening on itunes please leave your ratings and reviews and if you are watching on youtube please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel it helps us out so much and we have our patron group which is really fun and we also have our merch store which has tons of fun hallmark inspired merch so make sure to check that out as well that'll all be in the description section and thank you so much cassie this was really fun to catch up and to talk about this movie and to hear your announcement so this was a lot of fun let us know what y'all think if what do you think of a novel romance is it a favorite of yours uh, let us know so thanks again and we'll talk to you all later bye everyone all right, bye everybody Yay.